Hello again, this is Ken Klein, and we're going to take you back in history. I mean, when I say back in history, to ancient times, to ancient Egypt, uh, at the time that the Great Pyramid was built, because the Great Pyramid has a tremendous influence on today's world, uh, especially as it relates to Islam. And, of course, Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world, and uh, it's spreading like wildfire uh, because the Muslims believe that they have a purpose of bringing the whole world unto a, uh, un, unto a global caliphate. So their desire is to evangelize the world, uh, and not only by word but by force, uh, to bring the whole world and subject the whole world to this God, Allah. And uh, a lot of Christians today are trying to uh, make peace with the Muslims uh, by saying that Allah is no different than Jehovah or God himself. But the truth of the uh, derivation of Allah uh, goes back to the time of the Great Pyramid. And I want to talk about that today so you have a better understanding of, of this development that now is uh, uh, overshadowing the whole world. Uh, during the time of the building of the Great Pyramid, um, uh, actually people thought that uh, the pyramid was built as a tomb uh, for the great pharaoh Khufu, or Cheops as he was called also. But... Um, there was never any uh, mummy found inside the Great Pyramid, and neither were there any Egyptian hieroglyphics on the Great Pyramid, nor inside the Great Pyramid. The, the Great Pyramid, nor any period, pyramids in, throughout Egypt, uh, ever contained any uh, um, sarcophaguses or, or, or mummies of any pharaohs. These pyramids were built for a, for a different reason. And when it comes to the Great Pyramid, it was actually a prophecy in stone. Uh, you can find some information about this pyramid in the book of Isaiah, 19th chapter. It says there, and I'll, I'll try to quote it, uh, I will build a mon thus says the Lord, I will build a monument, a pillar it's called, uh, I will build a monument in the land of Syria, Syria was Egypt, specifically Cairo, I will build a monument in the land of Syria, and it shall be a witness unto the Lord of hosts, and it will be in the midst and the border thereof. Now, most people don't know, that there was an upper Egypt and a lower Egypt that was divided by uh, right through the top of the Great Pyramid. It actually was in the midst of Egypt and at the borders thereof. So the Great Pyramid fits the description uh, that was prophesied in the book of Isaiah, but it would be a witness unto the Lord of hosts, not a, uh, a, a funerary, not a, a uh, place for the burial of a pharaoh, but it was actually a prophecy hidden in stone. And what I want to talk about in regard to that is how this connects with Islam, because the, the whole idea of Islam goes back to uh, the, the Great Pyramid. Now, uh, if you take a cross-section of the Great Pyramid, you'll see that it's different than any other pyramid. You see that it has a, a king's chamber here, it has an antechamber here, it has a grand gallery here, down here was the queen's chamber, and then the descending passageway. This area here is blocked by big plugs, which we do a rendering in our pyramid trilogy and show you exactly what happened there with this great pyramid in great detail. There's three parts to it, and you may want to check our website out if you want to get a hold of that. But uh, during the nighttime, when the priest would stay in the, in, the, in the queen's chamber, which was their apartment, they'd come into the grand gallery, and that was before this was the upper portion of the Great Pyramid was built, and they would gaze up through the open area, and it was like a, a you know, a, an observatory, and they would watch the moon going across the sky, and they calculated that there were 12 lunar cycles. And so the Egyptians, specific, specifically one man, uh, was responsible for the development of the Egyptian lunar calendar, and it was based upon their observations that they made from this I guess you could call it an observatory at that time. That's what the Grand Gallery was. But uh, this person that had this tremendous knowledge of the stars and distances and languages, and you can read about all of his epitaphs in the, in the histories of Egypt, he was called Toth. And Toth had a, a uh, body of a man and the face, uh, I should say the head, uh, of, of, a, of an ibis bird. And, uh, you know, up in Hermopolis, which is about uh, uh, 200 miles north of Cairo, they have a funerary up there, an animal, an animal uh, 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 graveyard where there's tens of thousands of these ibis birds along with apes uh, to commemorate this god Toth, who, who was uh, this patron god of Egypt. 
And uh, he actually was a man. And yet uh, he was deified and called a god top. Now, in, in, the, in, the, uh, in the history of Islam, uh, they embraced this moon god, as he was called, because he invented this lunar calendar. And over every mosque today, you'll see this crescent-shaped moon, in, in, whether they know it or not. But it goes back to this Egyptian god, Toth, who, who in the time of the Kaaba uh, was, was known as Al-Ella, the moon god. He was the greatest god uh, of, of, the, uh, of, the, of, the, of the Muslims. And so the, the Muslims today, and you know, you can see this, you can see this same moon above the, the Dome of the Rock in, in Israel, in Jerusalem, uh, was this God who was uh, from the Egyptian era, but was a man. And a whole religion developed from this moon God, uh, Toth, and has now threatened to bring the whole world into this one world caliphate. And uh, of course, in the in the seventh or eighth century, when Umar came to Jerusalem, uh, he he came with with the guidance of this god uh, uh, Allah, whom uh, Muhammad uh, made the most and chief patron god of Islam. So the roots of Allah go back to the Egyptians with this moon god, who was a paganized. Uh, uh, idea of this human that lived at that time that was superior to all other humans. And we talk about this at great length in our film. You may want to get a hold of that uh, series on our website. I want to send you a free gift. If you'll just follow the instructions below, uh, we, we want to send that to you. That's all for today.